Most of the time I'll be using uh, stimulant in cases with infection and cases that have a significant amount of dead space. The uses of stimulant are for filling uh, bone voids and then I'll use it as a dead space filler in more extensive surgeries, particularly infection. I use stimulant in all my revision cases. Um, I use it to help manage dead space. All my infected cases I use stimulant in and use it in some primary cases. We became interested in stimulants about 2006, 2005 era because of the properties it showed. We were using calcium sulfate that was mined and our wound complication rate was about 25 percent. With the purified calcium sulfate that synthesized, uh, it went way down to 4 percent. I find stimulant very easy to use in terms of its uh, ability to be prepared, its uh, moldability and applicable in the revision setting. And also I've uh, you know, had experience with calcium sulfate in a less pure setting and I really like the fact that it's uh, much more pure and uh, you know, user friendly. I'd used products in the past um, and I'd had problems with drainage, I've had problems with, uh, I particularly don't like beads around knees. I think they're difficult to get out and requires another surgery. One of the great things is it dissolves. Um, these aren't cement beads where you have to worry about going back in in 10, 10 days, 14 days to try to remove them or try to do multiple debridements. Um, they're nice because you can put them in the infected site and just leave them there. With Stimulant it's nice because it's all, it's all reabsorbed so you don't have to go hunting for these beads, digging around into the cytic notch to try to retrieve a uh, cement bead. Um, that's going to do, you know, that's going to actually, you could induce some surgical damage doing that. I have really no concern with uh, the potential for damage to the implant. So if I put stimulant beads into the, uh, you know, around the joint, hip or knee, um, at the time of revision and taking that out, um, I saw no macroscopic visual damage to the implants. And I've actually had a couple of them looked at microscopically and, and have seen no significant damage to the polyethylene. I've never seen an adverse tissue reaction. I've never seen any problems with them that I could remotely connect to use of the stimulant. I haven't seen really any significant tissue reaction, whether it was uh, locally on the skin surface or when I returned to the operating room and, and went back to the area. I see no local reaction uh, to the stimulant at all. And I've gone back in on a few surgeries and I see no sign of wear through the polyethylene at this point. I do a fair number of infected revisions with joint replacement and that's my primary indication for using stimulant. I have not seen any drainage related to it. Um, I think that's partly surgical technique um, and also how much you use. You know, it may, may be how much you try to put into a defect. During the surgery, I like to really well, you know, well define the, the tissue planes, the fascial planes, so that on the way out, I can get a, a really, really tight closure on it. That's probably why I haven't seen any sort of drainage issues. I find it very simple, very easy to use. Um, most of the time though, the work and the preparation is done on the back table before I even start my surgeries. So uh, they'll make it for me, let it get hard, and once they do, they'll put it in a sterile cup, seal the cup, and then when I need it for the procedure, uh, they're, they're able to give it to me instantaneously, which has made the, the usage of it quite easy. We never have a problem for failure of product. Uh, I, I really like the product. I've been happier with this product than anything I've used in the last 30 years.